Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven and today we are attempting the solder paste. In all the previous pick and place videos, we made the machine place the components on the circuit board, but that's assuming that there's already solder paste on all the pads. Solder paste is kind of this goo that when you heat it up, it just automatically turns into molten solder and it makes it a ton easier to solder service mount components. Typically the way that that gets put on the board is with a stencil. This is the stencil for the glow tie. It's a really, really thin piece of steel that has been laser cut. So only the places where solder paste is supposed to go on the board are open. This is super cool, but you have to put each board in, squeegee a bunch of solder paste across, lift it up, put a new one. It's a pain in the butt. So instead, I wanna put a little extruder tube thing on the head of the pick and place, and it'll just automatically squirt out the perfect amount on all the pads. But the most important thing for this paste extruder is this 12 ounce jar of almond butter. Solder paste is incredibly expensive and I'm gonna waste a ton of it if I'm actually using solder paste. So I'm going to see if I can use almond butter as my surrogate paste. Turns out Googling something with the same viscosity as solder paste does not bear a lot of fruitful results. So hopefully this is kind of close. I found these little syringes on McMaster car. They're like three or four bucks a piece. They're not too expensive. And if I could design around this, I think that would be awesome. I whipped up a little test jig infusion to try and see if I can get a motor to push goop out of this syringe. So let's bust over to the printer, make that part and see if it works. Check it out. This thing looks so cool. So the way this works is the motor has a little coupler on the end, which attaches to a threaded rod. And then that threaded rod goes into a nut on this plunger. So when this rod spins, it moves the plunger up and down inside the body of the syringe. And then when the syringe slides in to this little recess, these arms will just slot over and kind of hold it in place. The edge of this little arm is actually offset from the rotation point. So it's kind of a cam that winches itself in place against this little block. So there's a little bit of a kind of pressure to hold the syringe in place. I was pretty excited about that design and it works pretty well too. So I haven't hooked this up to a motor driver yet, but if you just spin the coupler, you can see that it will very slowly push the plunger forward. So hopefully when I put some almond paste in this sucker, it will squirt all the paste out the end. I was a little worried about the fact that this plunger is completely unconstrained with rotation. And that maybe when the motor spins this threaded rod, it would just make the plunger spin around inside and not move down. But it seems like when I spin it, it actually just moves up and down pretty well and it doesn't rotate inside the plunger, which is awesome. I also expect this will be a little bit more reliable when there's paste in there because all the paste surface area against the end of the plunger adds a little bit of shear that hopefully also will keep it from rotating inside the whole syringe body. What a weird little <laughs> module. <laughs> it's time. Mm. Okay, here we go. <laughs> This is one of the weirder things I've ever done. <laughs> it got me. There we go, okay. Whew. All right, so it's filled up and I'm pretty sure I got most of the air out of it. If I push on the syringe, isn't that gross? <laughs> I put a little too much in here, so I'm gonna squeeze some of it out so I can fit it in the jig, and then hook it up to one of the axes on the ramps board just so I have something to control the motor with, and see if I can get it to precisely extrude some of this goop. <laughs> It's 
so cool and so gross at the same time. <laughs> it works! There is a little bit of like ooze, which you see with like an FDM 3D printer. Even after you stop extruding, there's a little pressure in the nozzle and it'll still kind of like spit out a little bit of plastic even after the extrusion motor has stopped moving. I think a little retraction move should solve that pretty well. <laughs> Okay, so now that I know that this whole setup works and dispenses paste pretty darn well, I'm gonna modify this a little bit so it can fit on the head, and then hopefully we can have this whole thing eh, eh, moving up and down and left and right and on the actual gantry, and then I can like put almond paste on my toast or something. <laughs> okay, time to modify this so I can roll it into the rest of the machine. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, it's all mounted on the head, and it moves up and down just like the other nozzle does. <laughs> it's super top heavy. The whole paste extruder assembly is attached to the linear rail in like a tiny little corner of the whole assembly, and it's kind of this big top heavy thing, so it definitely needs a lot of revisions. But it looks like it's gonna work at least for a proof of concept. I just unplugged the rotation motor for the suction nozzle and plugged the dispense motor right into that so I can control it really easily. And I can just send it a command and it'll just spit out a little bit of paste. It's so cool. So now that it's all hooked up to the machine, next is writing G code for it. I'm gonna try and draw out like this little circle shape with a little crosshair in the middle, just to see if I can get it to kind of make it look like that. I'm gonna use Slicer for the G code generation. It's super editable. You can change a whole bunch of different parameters and I'm gonna import an STL that's really thin and kind of make it think that it's a 3D printer and have it just print out a single layer print. All right, let's see what this thing can do. kind of did it. It looks like trash, but it made a circle and the little crosshair. From here on out, it's just tuning to get the right amount of paste to come out and figuring out what retraction settings I need between movements and all that kind of finicky little stuff. Also, I'm just using the raw blunt end of the little syringe that I'm using, which is like a millimeter and a half in diameter of the opening. And that is just not gonna give me a lot of good resolution. So this is probably pretty close to what I could get. I bet you I can make it look a little better. <laughs> I mean, it still looks pretty bad. <laughs> but now that the whole G-code pipeline is working, I'm gonna put my really tiny little nozzle on the end and then try and scale everything back and extrude much less. And hopefully I get a much more precise little spot of paste. And for this, I'm just gonna do dots. That's mostly what this paste extruder is gonna be doing is just going in and putting a little dot of paste on these tiny little pads, maybe sometimes a little bead of paste for like longer pads. But for the most part, it's just gonna be a little blink of paste. Okay. It does 
loves the thing. Look at these beautifully neatly spaced dots. I never thought I would be so excited about a grid of dots. <laughs> You know what they kind of remind me of is that candy that you get on the wax paper and you have to like peel them off, except it's greasy almond paste. It's cool, you can see every one of these rows was a different version of my G-code. So it was like kind of too bulgy at first and it was like the first bead was really big and then as it went down, my retraction was too much and not enough paste was coming out and then I like slowly started to like nail it in. I love this, you can see the progression of the tuning as it goes down the page. I'm really stoked about this. They're still just a tiny bit too big. I want them to be just a touch smaller, but I think that's very much achievable with what I have set up right now. If I get a smaller nozzle tip, which are actually coming in the mail right now, and I don't use almond paste, which kind of gets runny after a while when it warms up, and solder paste does too, but I don't think it's nearly as much as this almond paste is. So when I switch over to solder paste, I will almost definitely need to change all my settings to tune it. If I can do it with this stuff, I think solder paste will actually be a lot easier, but who knows? I haven't done it yet. It could be way harder. <laughs> that's so cool. It's so silly, like I'm so excited about a grid of dots, but they're like precision dots. The next big hurdle with this part of this project is generating the G code based on a design file. I haven't really looked into different kinds of software that might do this for me already. I know there's projects like the Volterra out there that already do this where they figure out where all your components are and where to put paste. I might end up just writing my own tool that takes in an SVG or a list of coordinate points and just writes a little G code to do it. If you know of a tool that might do that really well, let me know in the comments because I'm looking for an option. Although I kind of weirdly hope there isn't something because I think it would just be really fun to write that. And then after that, it's programmatic. Make me a glow tie puts out all the paste exactly where it needs to go. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Paste, baby! We love the paste! Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. spin around. Ow. <laughs> now I gotta put it on toast. Peanut butter or Nutella or Nutella.